for the first time ever. Tech, a Murata machinery brand, is allowing cameras into their facility, celebrating 50 years of excellence with automation being in their DNA. Let's step inside to learn a little bit more. Well, Ken, I'm so excited to be inside this building. For the first time ever, you've allowed cameras to come in and showcase this amazing turnkey center. This is not a showroom. This has lights and action, and we're shipping things out the door. Let's talk about the theory and, and the, the kind of mindset behind a turnkey center versus a showroom as we walk and talk a little bit about the machines and technology. Well, it, it is just our belief that uh, showrooms are really more for commodity type sales. And in this case, uh, this is our turnkey factory. Every machine you see here is sold. So uh, the customer has entrusted us to birth this turnkey up and get ready to ship out to them for their use. Uh, so again, what you see is sold. We don't have machines just sitting around under lumen lights. Um, and normally our customers don't want uh, other people seeing what we do here. So we had to scrub it a little bit uh, to, to be certain we meet our proprietary obligations, but uh, we're proud to have you here, and I think uh, the world needs to see what we're offering. So we're the excited. The world does need to see what you're offering. For my camera person, don't point at something too sneaky now. We want to show the world, but we want to be back again at some point. Now, your DNA, I know, has awesome in it. I already know mm -hmm. that, but the DNA of Murata is automation. Correct. You've been doing that a long time, and as I look around, I see it everywhere, and it's not something that's implemented as a secondary idea. It is something that's implemented within the machine itself. So let's talk automation. So our automation or gantries that you see in these machines are built by us, but the base design of the machine is done so to house the automation. So it's not an afterthought. It's not a third-party add-on. We're not using PCs and computers to drive it. This is what we do, and this is all what we do. All our products built at Murata Japan. We build, again, our own automation, our own machinery. None of it's really gone to a third party to be private labeled, which is a little unique in our industry at the moment. But automation in every division of Murata is what we do. It's in our DNA. It is in your DNA, but awesome is in your DNA as well. Let's just take a quick look because we, because we have cameras inside. Let's take advantage of it, right? You have this twin spindle situation here, right? So let's talk about the technology inside of the sheet metal. Okay, so this is a uh, MD120, which is a live tool twin spindle machine. So in this case, what we would do is typically run an OP10 and an OP20 uh, through the machine. So we're using some level of an in-feed device, whether that is an in-feed conveyor, a stocking table, which we build, and then typically to an exit device, whether that's also to another stocking table, conveyor could be to a robot that's doing something further with the machine but in, in this case what you see is op 10 op 20 with a turnover station above so we can get to the back side of the park to feed in my head you know I'm, I'm trying to connect with an audience that is very familiar with more of our standard turning centers right right and almost if we take a look at this and you were to split this down the middle and then pull one to the outside and pull other to the outside, you almost have a standard turning center. So now we have a common theme and a common understanding for everyone who's getting new to the Muratech Murata Cor technology. Correct. I don't want to oversimplify it to offend my engineers. No, of course not. But it is still a two axis or a three axis or a four axis lathe. Right. In our case, we're front facing because we're targeting chucker work. So 70% of the world's turning doesn't need a tailstock. So why use tailstock machines if you don't need it? So we're checker machines, and we this particular machine you see is a single gantry. We sell machines with twins, just really kind of based on the need of the throughput. If we don't need the extra cycle time, for we, we, we don't need to put the extra gantry. You know, kid, I, I'm gonna continue walking. And the reason I simplify things like that, and I don't want to oversimplify for the engineers, thank you for doing everything you do that I cannot, by the way. But I do that because if we can find something that we feel that is familiar, it is easier for us to grasp, understand, and want to participate in everything moving forward. And I know for a fact that you guys are dominant, and I'll say that again because I don't know if I said it with enough uh -huh. emphasis, but dominant in the automotive world. I mean, really there. 
but you're trying to get more and more and more into oil and gas, more into aerospace, more into these other parts of manufacturing. And in doing that, we want your name to have an echo. When somebody says it, we go, I know exactly what that machine can do for me in any job shop or production environment. Right, so, you know, the Murata name is very popular and known in the automotive industry. Outside the automotive industry, agreed, not as much, but most people don't realize last year we were almost split in auto to non-automotive sales. So we're a very diverse company, but our customer base is also a very diverse company. Years ago, the Murata company had a partnership with Warner and & Swayze. And as many customers know the Warner & Swayze name, outside the automotive groups, than no Murata. And today we're hoping to change that. Well, you're already doing a wonderful job. Thank and you. the reason we set you up for that is for the opportunity to say, hey, we are doing a 50-40, a 50-50, a 60-40, right. and congratulations yes, and kudos you. on that. It looks like we have something that I'm very familiar with. Looks like we have three turrets, maybe a second spindle on that backside. Yeah. Looks like we do, so twin yeah. spindle, three turrets. Can we talk a little bit about this technology as well? Absolutely. So. The MT series we build is available with or without a gantry. The one you're seeing here is with a gantry load. Uh, in this case, we have two uppers and a lower turret. Every tool position is a live tool, every turret with Y axis. So this is really what I refer to as a job shop in a box. If it will, the part will physically fit in here, there's not much we can't make with this. Now another advantage we have is again, all this is our own technology. We're one of the few companies that can actually bar feed on one side, use a stocking table on the other, and still use the gantry to feed as needed. That's a lot of access control that has to happen, and that's because of our control technology that's proprietary to us. All right, Ken, let's continue to walk, but as we walk, I wanna talk more about that if it's okay. Sure. Why would I want a bar feed and a gantry at the same time? So if you go that path, this allows you to have a smaller draw tube diameter on the main side, which allows me to have more RPM. So as I'm looking at making a part faster, I can use potentially bar at a higher RPM, and then if I'm doing castings or larger slugs, I can use the gantry to load in from the other side and still get the best of both worlds. That's clever. It is uh, very unique, uh, not so easy, but we do it all the time. Well, that's kind of what you guys yeah. are known for, is turning the not so easy into easier, right? That's correct. We have a. We have a Cracker Jack team of engineers here. <laughs> uh, so I'm really excited to show off the machine here, but before we actually talk about this machine, this, this not just machine, but this cell, I want to talk about the world of automation as a whole, because when we talk automation, which we all need right now, when we talk skills gap and labor shortage and everything right? that we're trying to do to diversify within our companies, we think of pallet change, we think sure. of bar feed, we think of cobots, we think of robots, we think of gantries, we think of floor space, we think of speed and timing. So when we think about all of these things, why gantry versus some of the other aspects of automation? Well, first and foremost, it's just a faster way to process a part of this more than the one. easiest answer, sure, right? Sure, <laughs> because we're not having to open an entire front door to load and unload. So as you can see in front of these machines, there's nothing there. Uh, so we can walk freely in front so there's a cycle time advantage right away from doing this. There's also a square footage advantage. Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, many of our customers apply cost to square feet. So if we're not taking up valuable floor space in front of the machine, now my cost of ownership to the end user, because if needed, he's got space for other machines. Uh, it, it's a it's simplex for us in a complex world that's trying to sell other things. Uh, th this path that you're seeing here, gantry load, AB op, in this case this is op 10s, feeding 20s, feeding 30s, there's probably not a more productive way to do this type of part. Uh, this is amazing, I would love for our camera crew to kind of show this off, but also don't want to leave this general area because you have inventory oh. just to the side of us as well. So as we're filming this really cool machine, which we'll talk about the technology, about how much inventory do you hold here to support your customers So we, we keep between nine and $10 million total of inventory. And you can see in our warehousing system here that, uh, you know, it's full. And another interesting tidbit, this is a Murata system. So one of our sister companies builds and designs this automated warehousing system. 
So normally they're a little larger than this, but because they're our company, they built one that fits our. Just for you just guys. Just built one just for us. Isn't that nice? Uh, and you awesome. do textiles as well. We do textiles as well, as, and also the other division is clean room automation. Clean room. Yeah, so companies that are building semiconductors and wafer chips, we're, um, we do automation systems and sales for that as well. So that is a uh, very highly technology uh, a, a division for us. However, we have a central R&D group, and that central R&D is pushing automation to all the divisions, but if they have a breakthrough in one division, they try to find another division it can work for. Thus, the carbon fiber uh -huh. gantry. That makes sense. Okay. Before I pop out of my skin with excitement, because we've been standing here long enough, I hear it running. Do you get excited when you hear the purr of things? The I, you know, when you hear the machines run, the gantries fly? I mean, this is exciting to me. I love this. I am a, <laughs> uh, not in the reference of music, but in the reference of machining, I'm a metalhead. <laughs> so I positively love coming in and watch us make parts. There's nothing I enjoy more. And let's talk about make. I mean, this this is making parts. I see one, two, three gantry systems. One, two, three machines, which means potentially up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Am I getting Correct. this all right? No, you're getting it exactly right. And we could even continue. We could do four or five machines in the cell. We could use two gantries. If we wanted to wash, gauge all in line, we can just keep adding into the automation for whatever the end user needs are. I got a, a story that I'm going to share with you that I Please. think you already know, but it's for the audience, really. Mm -hmm. I heard a story from one of your colleagues, Ken, that you have a cell like this mirrored with another cell on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. And the young man or woman who runs all of these machines just kicks their feet up, kind of looking at their phone, and just money is being printed at this point. Uh, Parts falling out of the machine, doing so well, and not falling in a bad way, but a good way uh, of parts uh, yeah. being made. And that's how easy these cells can be once they're up and going. Correct. And in most cases, an operator involvement in a cell like this may be five minutes an hour. And if they're mirror imaged, it still may be five minutes an hour for both cells. I use a uh, common slogan that we are definitely an operator favorite because it allows them to maybe check in on ESPN and what's the latest <laughs> as the machines are just making parts and money. Let's continue to walk. I love that. I, I, I think if, if I ever go back to machining, that would be the world I'd want to be oh, in yeah, as well. Oh, yeah, of course. And at the same time, let's be fair, it's high technology that's oh, making yeah. a lot of money for a company, but it mm -hmm. also allows the operator to kind of not be stuck loading, unloading, running from the machine yeah. to machine, changing codes to make sure offsets are done right. You know, it's... It's there for us, and you can add anything on the front end or back end that's needed in order to continue to automate that cell, sure. including measuring systems to go along with it, right? A, a very, uh, I think it's a, a, a misnomer that these systems are not flexible. They're ultra flexible. Uh, they're also ultra redeployable. So if you see this three system cell here, in two years, let's say the customer needs to do something else with the machines, they separate and can go do whatever they want to do. So is this the, they're very flexible. That, that's something I think that you look at this and you go, oh, if I don't make a million parts, I can't do that. It's almost the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's almost the opposite. Well, I can barely touch my toes anymore. I don't know about <laughs> you, but I'm glad these machines are flexible. I could use a little more yoga in my life. I could too, believe me. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about company history as we sure. continue to pass through more machines. But 50 years now in the U.S., 1974 was the startup. You guys are a solution-based company, which is why instead of a showroom, you have a turnkey center to make sure everyone's taken care of. Let's talk about all of that, the mindset. So the Murata family made the decision, obviously, in 74 to locate a facility here. But as they were growing globally, they are so customer centric that they have facilities anywhere they have any major business. And when this business started in 74, it was no doubt, need a facility, need people, need technology, need engineers. And now we've done that globally around the world with almost 9,000 employees. Wow. Wow. Something to be so proud of. It isn't is. It? Yes. And how long have you been with these guys? So 12 years. Woo. Well, you certainly know what you're talking about. Thank you. Well, I am excited to be here. I'm excited to show the audience everything that we haven't been able to for so long because of the uh, secrets that we keep, the cards close to our chest. As we start to close out this tour, there's two more aspects I would love to talk about. And that's to our cameras left and our right. I see machines being shipped out the door. And then just behind us as well, it looks like there's an area 
but I believe you calling it something special and that, although we've said turnkey center and set up for solutions, that may end up being something like a showroom? Yes, we're, it is going to be called the Murata Performance Center. I like that and, name, and Performance Center. This was kind of created as we had vendors and suppliers coming to us saying, hey, we know you guys are at great automation, but we want to do some tool testing. You know, hey, we know you're great at automation. We want you to do some robot testing for us. So it originally started as a pathway to work with our vendors that in turn help us. And now it's growing and growing to where we're going to do R&D trials for customers, test cuts for customers. So it will continue to expand. But that's really what we're going to see on this end of the building. And that will continue to uh, grow probably in the next 12 months. Well, Ken, let me just say on behalf of, well, the world, Thank you for opening your doors. You're Thank welcome. Thank you for adapting to this new crazy style of modern, oh. modern marketing where we get to see what's going on. We love our trade shows. We love our handshakes. We love inviting people in. But bringing cameras in is sometimes a new thing. And I know everyone who's watching right now is grateful to see what you have going on and realize that it's not just for massive production shops, but it's also for those job shops. Absolutely. And if you have 9,000 people around the world, that you have the support to take care of these folks. And if you want to go faster, you've been doing automation the entire time as an integrated process. We built our first gantry loaded lathe in 1980. Whew. So it wasn't like a few years ago. We've been doing this a very long time. Um, our technology, we, I mean, from every supplier in Japan to the suppliers here, our technology is created around automation. That is the cornerstone of what we do. Absolutely amazing, Ken. You've Good to been see a you. Pleasure. Thank a you, true Tony. Joy. Thank you for the tour. Thank you all for watching. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn more, reach out to my friend Ken. He has a great sales team as well, all around the country. We're here in the U.S., but certainly around the world as well, as MTD is a global channel. So if you need anything, reach out. This is the inside cameras for the first time ever. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you so much for your time. It's the one thing we cannot manufacture more of.